maybe two or three weeks ago now, I made the decision to switch um, my layout from using RS485 and CMRI to connect all the accessories and things up to JMRI um, and to use uh, TCP IP based communication, whether that was Ethernet or Wi-Fi and MQTT uh, for that communication. Um, I've since spent quite a lot of time with my head in code, rewriting sketches, and I've done a few videos on that, but I've been debugging and I've uh, had it running on the test bench and I'm now getting pretty confident that um, it might be time to switch from the workbench and, and bring it up and start trying to get it working on the layout. I currently have three boards like this dotted around the layout and they are up until recently they were uh, RS485 connected CMRI stations that just communicated with GMRI on the state of inputs and outputs inputs being um, coming from this this side of the, the state of sensors block detectors micro switches uh, it would send those states back to GMRI and would, re would receive updates on outputs such as signal LEDs and turnout states so what I need to do now is get all of them connected to Ethernet and that one has a, an Ethernet connect, uh, connection on it now and then start uploading the new sketches that want to communicate through those Ethernet adapters to JMRI using uh, MQTT in fact, they don't communicate directly to JMRI using MQTT, but never mind. Um, and uh, but then also up at the end there, I need to reconfigure JMRI to know to expect updates and send updates out over MQTT instead of over CMRI. I've taken a very tentative step to getting my actual layout talking to MQTT. I've installed, I've configured one of the Arduinos to be what used to be Node 1. I've got the code tested as much as I can. I can see on the node that it's outputting as it should. I did have somewhere a command prompt which has completely disappeared. Where's that gone? Here it is that's monitoring that server and is definitely getting the output from those sensors. So I know the Arduino is on the network. I know it's connected to the right server and I know it's outputting some sensor values. So these are good things so far. I then, I need to find panel pro on here. I've then added a new connection for MQTT on this computer. The MQTT broker server that I installed locally is running locally on the same computer as JMRI, which is why I've put this IP address in, which is a, a kind of local host look on this computer type address. So that will work. Um, and I've left all the other settings as default and the net result of this is none of the sensors it's on node one so it should be all these sensors that start with a one should now have picked up a value and none of them have and i think this is because they're on the cmri connection so even though i'm sending updates in a slash track slash sensor slash ID they're not getting here because these have the wrong prefix these are CX 1001s and the updates that I'm sending through MQTT from this Arduino node would only get here if they had a M prefix so just as a little test I'm going to add an MQTT server uh, sensor at 1001 and let's just call it test one whatever and I think this might immediately have a value <laughs> it doesn't oh it does now no because I did that so let's forget that yes now I think it does now I'm nowhere near the uh the Arduino and I can't test it but I suspect that 
this is working now and it's picked up a value because it's got this M prefix. And everything that's on my CMRI connection is not going to get updates naturally from MQTT. Now, there would be an option here to start setting up Logic NGs because Logic NG does support MQTT. However, that's kind of a little bit over the top. And I'm going to try the very um, against the rules, I guess, approach of editing XML files to try and move all of these CMRI connections onto MQTT. And obviously, before I even start on this, the big rule here, well, I think rule number one is don't do it. And rule number two is absolutely back ev everything up from my profile a number of times in a number of different places because once i start editing this x editing this xml file if i make any mistakes they're absolutely irreversible it's a good idea actually to back up um the uh the gemri profile um very very regularly actually and i, I do i've got a, a folder full of them probably on just to, to prove it um, a folder full of backups that I've made over time, just in, in dated folders on a, on a different uh, server, on a different computer to, to where this, this stuff is as well. I'm going in for this XML file then. I'm going to make a backup of the backup. This is the XML file that I need to change, the one that's got all my settings in it. So I'm just going to paste it here. And I'm going to open it with Notepad++. Plus plus. And here are all of my sensors, all of my turnouts, all of my signals, just all of my devices. And they all have these system names. And the system name that has their ID, the S in this is, is um, that it's a sensor. But the C is the connection prefix and just here in the settings again connection prefix can be seen here in the connection preferences cmri has a connection prefix of c and mqtt has a connection prefix of m so i need to change all these c's into m's and then i think they will switch uh connection that's what I hope anyway. So it might be a good idea to just start with the sensors. And what I'm worried about, I want to do a global replace. But if I just do a global replace on CS, I'm worried about what else I might find. I could do CS1 because I'm only doing node 1 at the minute. That would be interesting. Um, if I do a quick find next, it's going to go through all of the sensors. This will give me an idea of what it's going to replace. So block occupancy sensors, that's good. It's going to need to replace those as well because the names are going to change. Layout blocks have occupancy sensors. So I do need to change all of these. And then we are, we're back to the top. So I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a replace. I'm going to do CS1, and in its place, I'm going to do MS1. I'm going to replace all of those 52 occurrences, and I'm going to save it. I'm then going to go back to my backup, and we'll do this on the layout computer. I'm just going to do those sensors to start with to see if anything happens and then i'll worry about everything else later so there was a backup and there was an xml file and i'm going to take that i'm going to put it back in my layout but i'm going to back this up as well and i'm going to paste this in fact it would be a good idea wouldn't it, to quit gmri first it open gmri again and what i would expect now i don't know if i'm actually going to get any responsive sensors but what i would expect is for some of my sensors to have moved onto the mqtt connection 
there they are so we now have statuses for all sensors on the node formerly known as node one more xml editing now i think have i changed i don't think i've changed anything so i don't need to save and reload this so i've got all my ms's undoubtedly next is going to be turnouts which is a big worry because this is where things can physically go wrong and i know what they're going to look like it's going to be ct these are still sensors aren't they got cs's i might do the rest of the cs's as well cs2 and cs3 not that those nodes are running yet but it's good to get it all done and these Uh, internal sensors. Right, here are the turnouts. Maybe it's a good idea to just continue with node 1 for, for the time being. So let's go and find some CT1s. This is good we want to change these because these are the the ids on the signal heads these are the the these will target the shift out register and the leds but they do need to be changed and then we straight back into turnouts that's good so down all the turnouts are definitely going to need to change these just need to be a little bit careful so then we're on to signals and there aren't that many of them so i just need to see Condition NG, yep, yeah, reference to it in condition. Right, let's do it. Let's do CT1 to MT1. And do it. 51. Now we need to save this again. We need to go back to the node again. We need to exit without saving so without did i make any i don't think i made any significant changes there let's just quit 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 and i need the backup file which was this one was it 840 840 and i need to copy it back into my railroad I know that one works. So let's make another copy of that one. Uh, just going to double check what I actually did that replace. Was it MT? Did I actually do MT? Yes, I did. Just to be certain. And let's run. Actually, I need to be upstairs when I run this. This is going to be difficult to film, but I do expect some kind of reaction down in that corner. They're set to move slowly, but they are set to move, and I've edited the XML file, so running. I'm going to come down here. Nothing. I can see sensors. Reflecting here. What's oh, moved? That one's not moving back. It's not perfect. They're not moving back after they've moved. So I click that and I'm getting a, a response to a message of thrown. I'll keep it on here. What about trying to move it back? Yeah, it's working. Something um, that I'd mentioned in a video I did about CMRI was that I found something in the Arduino CMRI library that might have prevented turnouts moving 
as slowly and smoothly as I might like them to. Um, and so when I've done this MQTT code, bearing in mind that there is no CMRI um, uh, dependency here, I did include the code that does the slow turnout movement. And it is actually, trust an aeroplane to come overhead when I need quiet, but it is actually a lot smoother and, and more consistent than it was under um, under CMRI. So I'll, I'll try it and stay quiet and see how quiet it can go as an example. And back again. And that really is a lot um, smoother and, and so much quieter. It's, it's harder on a microphone to pick up how quiet that is, but certainly they would never be audible over um, um, a train or, or two running. And that was it really. The, um, there were one or two bugs I needed to iron out. I think um, the, the turnout sensors weren't being invent, uh, inverted when they should be and that was what was stopping them turning um, when I was clicking the, the button. I got that sorted out and really after that the code at least and MQTT were doing what I wanted them to do. It did expose some cabling which I'm uh, cabling issues which I'm in the middle of fixing now but um, I have definitely made the decision I'm sticking with MQTT. I think, like I've said before, it works for me because I'm relatively comfortable in the code and there's definitely more code involved um, in, in MQTT than there is in CMRI. And, and although there's less code in CMRI, I don't think the, the CMRI Ethernet and Wi-Fi is... It, implementation is that great in JMRI because of all the connections you need so I'm definitely sticking with MQTT um, and once I've got my wiring and cabling sorted out um, I think I'll be just about sorted with it